Good morning, church. We're so excited that you're joining us this morning. We wanted to remind you that just because we're not physically in a church building doesn't mean we can't worship like we are. So let's jump right into it.
Church, good morning. Um, I'm excited that I have the opportunity today as your pastor to speak life into you, to speak truth, and to shepherd you, especially through this season that we're living in, um, in 2020. I mean, who would have ever thought that 2020 was going to shape out to be like this? And if you've called Venture Home for a long time, you've been through this journey with us, it's been challenging. Um, you know, it started off hearing I remember coming out of a Sunday service, done preaching, uh, tearing down, and one of our students by the name of Alex coming up to me and saying, hey, did you hear Kobe died? And I was like, Kobe? No way. He said, yeah, check your phone. This young student, his name was Alex, and I thought he was messing with me. And I said, Alex, you're tripping. He said, check it. I said, okay, I will. And sure enough, I saw it. And for all of us, we were just so shocked. Such a young man, you know, uh, full of life. Um, and so many lives that day were lost. Um, it was ironic that a couple weeks later, Alex would be hit by a car and lose his life. And as a church, we mourned his death. Um, and a week later or so, then COVID-19 hit. Um, and, and we've been in shelter in place for 70 plus days. Um, and, and then we have this racial injustice that's taking place with, um, with, with the life being taken from George Floyd. And so there's just so much chaos happening all around us. Um, but I want to say this, church, I want, I want to bring a message of encouragement today. We are going to continue our series that we're in because I feel like it, it aligns up with what we're going to talk about. Um, and we are going to continue the series Necessary Sins. But I want to encourage you. What, what, the, what the enemy is trying to use COVID-19 and racial injustice for is, is evil. He's trying to bring division 
and, 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 and he's trying to um, just strike fear and, and really get us, especially as the church, divided. But we're not going to let that happen. What we're going to do is what God is going to do and what we're already seeing with all of this stuff that's taking place. He's going to use it for good. And I'm, I am um, hopeful and I do see it. I do see people coming together, united. I do see even in our own church conversation, tough conversation that's being had with people about racial injustice, about systemic racism, about things that um, we haven't really spoken loud about. And, and I'm so encouraged that I'm seeing my brothers and sisters come together, making intentional phone calls, texting, checking in. Um, and, and me as your pastor, I will not bury my head in the sand when I see these things all around us. So I want, I want to set this up real quick because we are going to continue the series, um, um, Necessary Sins. And if you're with us for the first time, we want to welcome you. Um, welcome. I'm happy you're here for the first time. I'm happy you're here for this particular message. And, and I, want to, I want to tell you why we're naming this uh, Necessary Sins. If you're here for the first time or you call Venture Your Home and you haven't been here during this series, um, we as believers, we put sin into different categories, small, medium, and larger sins. And some of those larger sins are like murder, rape, and stealing. And, and our world today, society and culture, have taken quote-unquote smaller sins and have said, oh, no, these are okay. Some have even said they're necessary. And so just because the world is saying they're necessary, it's not like God is sitting back and saying, okay, since society and culture say it's necessary, then go ahead. Eat up these sins, right, like a Chinese buffet after your son graduated high school this last Thursday. Go ahead. No, absolutely not. That is not what God is saying. In church, we know this. We know that sin is what? Sin is sin. And today, we're going to be talking about anger. Okay? Now, anger, if you allow it, it will produce rage, division, lashing out, cursing out, uh, physically hurting somebody, emotionally hurting somebody. It, it, will, it will give somebody, uh, if, if anger turns into this rage, it might be you giving somebody, somebody the international finger that they're number one. And I'm not talking about this finger. I'm talking about another finger from these four fingers. You can figure that out for yourself. So anger, for us sometimes as human beings, sometimes as believers, can be easily justified or rationalized. And we say things like this. Well, if you wouldn't have posted that, if you wouldn't have said that on your feed, right? If you just wouldn't have done that, then I wouldn't have been angry with you. We say things like, if, it, if this didn't happen, I wouldn't have lost my cool. Or, or, hey, you know what? This is just how God created me. Sorry that I don't beat around the bush and I say it pretty bluntly and straightforward, but this is just how I am. This is how God created me. We have to stop making excuses, Right? I want to make this clear. Someone say clear it up, Pastor. I want to clear this up today. Okay, To feel angry is not a sin. To feel angry is not a sin. It is our response to anger that will lead us to making the right decision or the wrong decision. And when we make the wrong decision, that's where sin comes to play in our life. Listen to what Scripture says in Ephesians 4, 26 and 27. It says this, in your anger, do not sin. Straight up, okay? It says, do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Will you say foothold with me? Someone say foothold. Type that in right now if you are with us on the live. The Greek word for foothold is translated topos, okay? And this word means, when it's translated, it means an opportunity, it means a location, and it means a room. And I want to say this, listen, in the middle of the chaos, right, in the middle of this pandemic, in the middle of all the, 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 the injustice that we're dealing with, the, the, the racism, and, and, and maybe you're just so broken and heartbroken and angry and raged, um, in, in the middle of uh, this pandemic, like I said, maybe there's a pandemic in your marriage, maybe there's some division, maybe there's some things that are happening today right? Maybe you're still frustrated because you can't get your nails done. I don't know, but this is what I want to say to you. 
do not let the enemy check out a room on your Airbnb in your heart, right? Because he will if you allow him to. And he will try to eat you up and harden those places in your heart when your anger turns into some of these things that are producing sin. We cannot let anger live unchecked and unguarded in our hearts. We must bring them before God and ask him to search our hearts for what is breaking his heart and ask him to do what is right in our heart, especially as followers of Christ Jesus in whatever circumstances that may be in your life. In Genesis, we see two brothers and their names is Cain and Abel, okay? And anger starts to creep in into Cain's heart and it starts leading him into the wrong direction. And God knows this and he, and he sees this in Cain and Cain tries to give him an offering, but God says, no, I'm not going to receive that offering because of the anger in Cain. Okay, scripture will say this, this you can find in Genesis 4, 6 through 7. It's this, then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, you will not be accepted, or you will be accepted, excuse me. But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. I'm going to say that again. But you must rule over it over it. Do you know as a believer you have an authority from Christ Jesus to rule over that sin that's trying to entangle you and weigh you down, especially when it comes to this thing called anger. Are you still with me today? See, don't give the devil a guest room in your heart. No, absolutely not, because if you don't bring your anger before God, sin is crouching at your door and it desires to have you. Okay, I know many that are watching right now, I know because I feel this way, you might be frustrated, you might be angered, outraged, broken, asking what the heck is happening in our world today? What is happening in our world today? <clears throat> What's happening with society? Excuse me. <clears throat> and I'm going to tell you this, me too. I feel the same exact way. I'm frustrated. I can't believe with what's happening, with what we're seeing on the news, with all these things that are taking place. So how do we respond, especially as believers, right? How do we filter through our emotions, especially when it comes to this outrage we feel toward racial injustice? I want to lay some foundation for us as believers when it comes to racial reconciliation, did you know that Jesus was all about diversity? Even in his own inner circle, the disciples, there'd be a man by the name of Matthew who was a tax collector and worked for the Roman government. And then there'd be a man named Simon the Zealot who wanted to overthrow the Roman government. Do you think these two ever clashed? I'm sure they did, right? But this is how intentional our Jesus is with diversity. Remember, Jesus is God in the flesh, okay? And so in his inner circle, there was diversity. God loves diversity. He loves people that see things differently and also love people who look differently. Excuse me. <clears throat> so jot this down, okay? If you're taking notes, jot this down because this is so important. Diversity is all a part of God's plan. And I love our church, Venture Church. When you look at Venture Church and you see what it's made of, of, it's made up of all kinds of different ethnicities. We have black people, white people, brown people, tan people, all kinds of different shades and all kinds of different sizes. And we love it. We love it at Venture Church, right? Because this is God's heart. Revelation 7 gives us a picture of what, what heaven looks like. And so an early follower of Jesus, John, gets an opportunity and sees what heaven looks like. And he's writing this down. And in Revelation 7, 9 through 10, we hear it. It says this, After this I looked, and there was a vast multitude from every nation, tribe, people, and language, which no one could number, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands. 
And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. Did you hear that? This was God's plan from the very beginning as well. When he created Adam and Eve, he created what? Diversity. He wanted the world to reflect his heart. So he created a bunch of things. He created animals. He created a lion and a tiger. And then Joe Exotic brought Napoleon Dynamite's hope to life with a, with a liger. That was a joke. I hope you can laugh. Um, and, and I don't think it was Joe Exotic that created that. So anyways... He created foliage. What is foliage? This is something else that I had to just ask. What the heck is foliage? My great friend Shane was talking about foliage. He loves the outdoors. And I had to ask him, what are you talking about when it comes to foliage? And they're actually leaves that fall off trees. And so I, I, am, I love the foliage in my front yard. But my neighbor's yard, I'm going to say this right now. Um, the, the, the shape and size of their leaves, I'd hate to have that in my front yard because they're larger. Mine are a lot smaller. I love the foliage from my tree. You will thank me later for that, church, okay? Let's keep on going. He created diversity. That's what we're talking about, right? Diversity. This, di this directly shows us the heart of God when it comes to diversity. If you don't like diversity, then you don't like what God has created. As human beings, we are created by God um, as a diverse group of people to bring glory to God. Different nations, tribes, and tongues that we will see all over heaven one day. So if you have a problem with this and you are a believer, I, I, you better check your heart. I remember a preacher one time saying, if you have a problem with the person next to you, maybe, maybe you don't agree with them, maybe you're frustrated with them, maybe you have some real anger toward them, you better check yourself because one day you're going to maybe go to heaven and see that their mansion is being built right next to yours. So you better check yourself. If you have a problem with diversity, then you might have a bigger heart issue, a bigger issue, and that might be a heart issue. Okay? So you want to you wanna ask yourself today, if this is bothering you, you got to check your heart. As believers, we should work toward racial reconciliation in our workforce, right, in our schools, in our churches, all over society today, period. So let us not forget that our God wants diversity, not just in society today, not just in our world today, but also in the kingdom. Jot this down if you're taking notes, okay? And I'm, I'm really excited about this next point, and it's this. The good news brings a vertical and a horizontal reconciliation, right? The good news that we have in Scripture, it brings a vertical and a horizontal reconciliation. Listen to this. The Apostle Paul would say this, For he is our peace. Who is he? God. He is our peace. Christ, right? God sent his one and only son, Jesus. Christ is our peace, right? Who made both groups one and tore down the dividing wall of hostility in his flesh. Listen, who are these two people groups? These are Jews and Gentiles, right? And the Gentiles were treated horribly. The Jews thought that they were better than the Gentiles because they were God's chosen people, and they took that and ran with it. And they looked at Gentiles as aliens that don't belong. They segregated them. They didn't want to mingle with them. And this stir up a, uh, anger in, in the hearts of the Gentiles, right? And it, it, it brought division. And, and, and this stirred up anger, not just in Gentiles, but also in Jews. And there was a division. This started a long time ago. So Jews thought that they were better than Gentiles, right? And treated them like aliens, not even like second class citizens. But Jesus, someone say Jesus, changed all of that. Someone say peace. In the beginning of that scripture, it says this, for he is our peace. When you think about peace, what do you think about? I personally think about Jesus because the Bible says that Jesus is our Prince of Peace, right? And so I think Jesus, Jesus, what did Jesus do? He died on a cross for our sins, right? To bring a hope and to, to hopefully that you and I would choose him and we would get this reconciliation from him to the Father because what? What, is, what does sin do to us, guys? Sin separates us from God, right? And so scripture says this, for the wages of sin is death. But God made a way through his son Jesus to reconcile us to him if we as human beings were to choose Jesus and believe in Jesus as our Lord and Savior. 
So now through the death on the cross, we have a peace with God. So if you chose that, if you've chosen Jesus, if you've said yes to Jesus, you are excited about this vertical reconciliation. But I want to say this to you, church, and, and to you that is a believer, I hope that you are as equally excited for a horizontal reconciliation. So what does it say about this? Ephesians 2, 14 through 16 would say this, for he himself is our peace who has made the two groups, remember Jews and Gentiles, one, and has destroyed the barrier. He has knocked down the wall, okay? I'm going to talk about that in a little bit here. The dividing wall of hostility is what Scripture says, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. Listen to this. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put death their hostility. When we hear of the destruction of a barrier, it was literally a dividing wall that scripture is talking about. The Gentiles could go to the temple. They could go to the temple, but there was a wall that segregated them that was far off to the side of the temple so that the Jews didn't have to to have anything to do with them. They weren't allowed to go into the temple. They were on the side of the temple. And that's where the Jews believed that they belonged. They were segregated. See, this mess started a long time ago, right? The whole goal of Jesus' death was both vertically and horizontally. Someone say Jesus. Jesus can change everything. And he's changed so much in me. And I know you that are, that are listening to this that's a follower, you know he's changed so much in you. You know he's changed so many things in your heart. He's even given you a different taste for life. So when there is division between us and God, between each other, in our homes, in our communities, in our world, with our friendships, it breaks the heart of God. When people are separated for any reason, including our skin color, it breaks the heart of God and offends the heart of God. Uh, uh, let's point this out for what it is. It is not how God wants us to live. It's not. And, and I'm telling you right now, with what we're seeing, we need to bring light to it. With what happened to George Floyd, we need to bring light to it. We need to, we need to not bury our heads in the sand. We need to speak up for the injustices. We need to speak up for the racial injustices in this world. We need to speak up for the, the systematic, the, uh, the systemic uh, racism that continues to plague. We need to stand. We need to speak about it. And we need to do it in a loving way. And that's what's going to bring me into our third point. And jot this down. Love is our greatest weapon right now. Love is our greatest weapon. In these times that we are living in, we need to use that as our greatest weapon. It is our greatest weapon to fight against racism, social injustices, and the problems in our world today. Listen to this in John 13, 33, 35. It says this, Dear children, how brief are these moments before I must go away and leave you? Then though you search for me, you cannot come to me. Just as I told the Jewish leaders. So now I am giving you a new commandment. Someone say new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. We must love each other. We must love each other. If there is not an increase in the love in our heart then there is something wrong with our faith. There is something wrong with our faith. As we grow as believers in knowledge and wisdom, it should bring a greater love for one another. We have an opportunity, church, to show love to this world that we are truly His followers, that we are truly His disciples because we are showing people that we love one another. I'm not saying you have to fully agree. I'm not saying that whatsoever. But we should love above all else. Let's love one another. Even if we disagree, let's choose that in the midst of it, what we can agree on is Jesus. 
But we still have to talk about these things. We still have to bring these things to light. And we cannot just not say anything. What is the greatest witness the te uh, and testimony we can have for the church? It's showing love, mercy, compassion, empathy, and learning. Someone say learning. Learning, what's the opposite of learning? It's ignorance. Do not operate from a place of ignorance, especially with what's happening in our world today. No, educate yourself. If you have um, a problem with some of the issues that are happening, if, if you're not understanding, if you are, 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 are still wondering, how do I even say something about that? Ask. I have black friends that I have been asking, how can I go about it? What questions should I be asking? What, what can I be doing in this time? And I'm telling you right now, when you ask, you are learning, you are growing, and all of my friends aren't shaming me for the questions that I have. No, they are. They are saying, I'm, I'm, I'm just so blessed. I'm so happy that you would even ask these questions. See, a part of my story is, is, is this. I grew up um, in Aptos, and I love Aptos. I grew up in Seascape, a predominantly white community. And, um, and, and I, I moved from Aptos all around the Central Coast, but at one point I ended up finding the bride of my life, the love of my life, uh, Anna, and, and falling in love with her and wanting to get to know her. And she, you know, getting to know her, I asked her, what do your parents do? And she said, her dad's a pastor. And I said, oh, that's cool, where? Let's go to his church. And she said, well, it's a predominantly Spanish-speaking church in the east side of Salinas. And I go, oh, okay, let's go check it out. But in the midst of that, in, inside of me, I'm thinking, man, the east side of Salinas? I've heard about the east side of Salinas on the news. And everything that I hear about the east side of Salinas is not good. I thought that it was just a gang-infested side of town, that, that everywhere you walk, everywhere you go, you got to look behind your back. And little did I know, because God has such a, a sense of humor, right? I, I would end up marrying Anna. I'd become a youth pastor. And where would I become a youth pastor at? In the heart of the east side of Salinas. And I don't speak a lick of Spanish. Think about that, right? But there is a group of young people at this church that God would allow me to shepherd and, and to lead many to Christ. And he would have a plan for that. But in the midst of that, I would, I would actually have relationships with people on this side of town that I thought was just full of infested. It was just a, a, a gang infested town or, or side of town. And I would learn something different, that this is a loving community. That there are people on this side of town that cook amazing food. Thus, I gained 40 pounds. This side of town, I love the pan dulce, the culture, so rich. And see, here was the thing. I operated out of ignorance in the beginning until I learned, until I did life with these people, until I, I realized, like, no, this is not all there is to what uh, the, the, maybe the news painted or, or maybe some of the things that I heard from friends. No, it is different. Don't operate out of ignorance. And I'm asking you today to not do that. But learn. Be, be, be ears for people that need to mourn, that need to speak out, right? Especially about racial injustice, right? Love, show empathy. That's God's heart. And that's where we should choose beyond all else. Let's not try to prove each other wrong. Let's try not try to dig so deep to try to prove our points. Let's stop. Let's listen. Let's love. Let's encourage. Let's speak hope. This is not just an issue that is happening today. This is happening. Uh, this has happened all the way in the biblical times that we are reading in today. And we can take a page from this and understand the, the heart of God. We must be careful that our anger doesn't bring division. That we continue to talk about these hard issues. And I know those conversations are hard, but we need to continue and do it in love and have these discussions and like I said, even in disagreements, continue to love and walk through it with one another. This is so important. Our faith needs to override our feelings. And we have to put these things into practice. Remember, this is what the Bible says. James 1.20, human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. It doesn't. That's James 1.20. I want to encourage you today, church, to be encouraged, to, to live from that place of hope because we have a living hope and his name is Christ Jesus. 
Don't give in to all the things that are happening around us. And if you are gonna post something, if you are gonna repost something, if you are going to say something, let it come from a place of love. I believe that we need to be talking about our, our injustices. I believe we need to be talking about these things and it's gotta be front and center right now. As you walk through this season of your life, I'm not asking you, do not take sides. People feel like they need to take a side. No, you know what you have to do? Is you need to remind yourself that you are a believer, that you are a Christ follower, and that's the side that you are going to stand on. But with that, sometimes you have to raise your voice, meaning you have to say something, meaning you can't just be silent. You have to speak up. If we are silent, nothing will change. Use your voice for good. Speak from a place of love and truth. And let us continue to fight the good fight. This has been a hard season for me as a pastor. But like I said, I'm not going to not say anything. I'm going to speak up. I can tell you my pastor friends are having a hard time as well, trying to find the right words. But I'm encouraged to see that the churches around us are speaking up and saying something about it. Guys, we are united. Let's continue to be united. Let's not let the enemy get a foothold nor a room in our heart. Let us not allow that, but let us push that out and let us fight for unity. Let us be with each other. I'm gonna encourage you, if you're having a hard time with what's taking place, call a friend, talk about it, dialogue, and listen. Listen. I know it's hard, but God is in front of this. I didn't take him by surprise. And we, as his people, need to make sure that we walk through it in the right way. I want to pray for you today. I want to pray for your heart. I want to pray for the things that you are going through, for maybe the anger and frustration and the hurt and the pain, and for the injustice that we feel in our hearts. Why is this continuing to happen? Let's pray. We know that prayer is powerful. So let us pray. And if you haven't been praying, I encourage you to start. It will bring a peace over you and a calmness, I promise you. Let's pray, Father God, we need you. We can't do life without you. This has been so hard for us. And God, today I pray for our community. I pray for peace. I pray for justice. I pray, Father God, for our people that are struggling, that are hurting, that are having a hard time with this. God, I pray that it would not produce an anger that would produce rage, but I pray that we would be peaceful. I pray that we would be God-fearing. I pray that we would show people your love, the love that is within us. Father, I pray for our community, our friends that are black, that are suffering, that are crying, that are hurt, that are in pain because of the injustices. Father God, I pray for them right now. And I pray, Lord, that you would continue to bring courage and strength and a peace in their hearts and their lives today. Father, I pray for our whole entire community, our church. Lord, help us. Help us as we sift through our thoughts, our feelings, as we process, Lord. Help us to go to your word. Lord, you love diversity. Lord, I am so grateful for the cross that it brings a reconciliation to us a vertical but also a horizontal and God I pray that today that our weapon that we would use in the midst of the chaos would be love above all else help us to love Lord we need you guide us through this God our nation we pray Father God for our leadership for our president I know that we don't all agree with his words and for the things that he is doing right now but we pray for his wisdom for his discernment as you guide his steps. God, we pray that he would use this platform for good in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray against division. I pray against the rage. I pray against those that are <clears throat> using this moment in history to do things that are not what you want. I pray against racism. Father God, I pray against division. Lord, bring unity to our nation. 
to our people, to our church. Help us, God. We need you. We love you. We praise you. And we want what you want. For it is in Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen. Amen. Hey, if you picked today for the first time coming to Venture, you picked a good one. And uh, I want to say this to you. Maybe you're new today. Maybe you've never given Jesus your whole entire life. Maybe you call yourself a Christian and you haven't really been following him. But you've said, yeah, I'm a believer. You know, before Christ can be your Savior, he's got to be your Lord. And I want to encourage you today to give him your life. Maybe you are that person today for the first time saying, I am just so broken. <clears throat> I'm so broken and I need a Savior. I want to encourage you today to give your life to him. And if that's you today, say this with us. If you're saying, I want to say yes to Jesus, say, Jesus, I need you. Come into my heart. Make me new. Help me to follow you. Father, break my heart for what breaks yours. And I ask that you would forgive me of my sins. I believe that you came down from heaven, that you died on a cross for my sins, and that three days later you conquered the grave. Lord, help me to follow you. Help me, Father God, use me and guide me. I want what you want in my life. Lord, today I say yes to your son, Jesus. For it is in Jesus' name, all God's people say, amen. Hey, if you made that decision today, there is about to be a prompt on your screen that says, if you said yes to Jesus, say yes. If you did, it will lead you into a connection card. Hey, would you fill that out? We want to get to know you and want to celebrate with you. Church, we have work to do. We are not done. Right? There is so much work to do. There is work to do with reconciliating people to God the Father. And that breaks our heart because sin is entangling this world. There is brokenness. And we want to be on the front lines of reconciliating people to the Father. And through that, how we do that is through Christ Jesus. There is also this horizontal reconciliation. And we will not bury our heads in the sand as a church. No, we will speak up for the injustices, for the racial injustice, for the systematic injustice, we will be on the front lines. And I'm encouraged to see what is, what is happening in our church. Like I said, the conversations, the love, the outpour, the checking in, let's continue to do that. Church, we love you, I love you, I can't wait till one day we'll be able to meet again um, in, in a gathering physically, but for now we are scattered together and we are together. Hey, I hope today encouraged you. I hope you live it out and I hope you put it on because it will not happen unless you put it on and live it out. We love you guys. I hope you have a great rest of your Sunday and we will see you soon. God bless. Good morning, Venture family. Happy Sunday. Um, another week of being scattered but together, as we like to say here at Venture. I feel very fortunate, you know, in a, in a time where there's a lot to be upset about, uh, rightfully so, uh, a lot to be anxious about, uneasy about, um, uh, and the list goes on and on. You know, I, I, I do feel grateful um, to, to live in a time where this is possible, worshiping together, uh, communicating during the sermon, being encouraging, checking on one another, um, all through technology. You know, uh, we don't all have to be in the same room as we've seen, you know, in order to, uh, to come together to hear the word of God and to worship together and, 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 and just to be a church family. So I'm, I'm very thankful for that. Uh, well, good morning and welcome again. As I said, uh, my name is Jared Machashek. Uh, my wife, Bethany, and I, we serve here at Venture in a few different ways. And one of those ways is uh, speaking on tithes and offerings. Um, you know, I'm, I'm jokingly referred to uh, sometimes as a finance guy, which, man, that's, that's definitely not me. I know a few things and it's really just because of my dad. But man, if you would have you would have said that about five years ago, and if you would have seen how I handled money five years ago, um, you'd probably turn this off right now because you don't want to hear what I have to say, and I wouldn't blame you. Um, but thankfully, God has allowed me to grow and change and and really to um, um, get a hold of my finances. And, and, and so be encouraged. Um, you know, there is light at the end of the tunnel. You know, financial uh, stability is not out of reach. It's not something that's unattainable. The paycheck to paycheck lifestyle is something um, that can be broken. You know, savings can happen. Um, you know, no amount is too small. I think that people get discouraged a lot um, when they don't have a lot left over or they don't, um, 
have any leftover um, after paying everything or and you know a lot of a lot of things can be adjusted um, that you may not know about so um, I encourage you to reach out or reach out to me I'll reach out to uh, Pastor Matthew um, he can put you in touch with me um, and I'm sure other people that, that at our church that would be more than more than willing to share um, how they budget and how things help them you know communication is the first step in, in basically anything so um, I just try to encourage you know talking about money uh, as much as possible because you know it's a very real thing it, it definitely um, you know, can make or break situations. It can make or break how you live. Um, it could be the difference in um, surviving and thriving, you know? And um, I think all of us want financial freedom in some form or another. And, and, and if you do, if you are financially free, um, you know, share, share, share what you've done. Um, be open about it. You know, if you have friends, you know, check in on your friends. You know, I know, again, money is such a taboo thing to talk about. But you never know who might just have a couple little tips and tricks. I mean, that's really all I have. You know, I just, my, my, my dad taught me a few little things in the budget, different things to look for when shopping for different types of insurances. I mean, you know, and I did those things over time and, and you know, now I, I, I'm in a, my wife and I were in a good place. Um, so, and you know, a, a lot of times when we do tithes and offerings, we come up here and we share a Bible verse and we... Um, you know, we go into it like that, and I'm definitely gonna do that. Um, but I, I, I wanted to kind of, you know, just, just speak, just very honestly and real, and just say, hey, like, if you're struggling, you know, you never know who you, you never know who might just have something that'll work or some, some, something that somebody's done that you didn't even know was possible. There are so many things now, when it comes to anything regarding money, you know, you can always shop for different things, shopping car insurance, and you, can, you know, you, those things can always be shopped for and prices lowered. And you know, things are always constantly changing. Just because you have had something for so long, it doesn't mean you have to stay that way. Just because you've always had a car on payments doesn't mean you have to stay that way. You know, and maybe it's something with you know, maybe, and if you do have a car on payments and you're able to make payments, that's great. That's a good way to build credit. And so there's, there's conversations that need to be had that I just, I really want to encourage us all to, um, to be comfortable with having. I mean, come to me, ask me, you know, I'll be happy. I'm, I'm not selfish with my knowledge. You know, I don't know a whole lot, but you know, I know enough to, that, that got me out of a very deep hole I was in. Um, so I, I just want to be encouraging to everybody, you know, please just speak up. If you have problems, you know, don't start shouting numbers and being all crazy. But I mean, I definitely encourage you to, you know, reach out and say, hey, look, I'm struggling. You know, I it, it, I don't want to feel like I don't have any money from this time to this time because of all this. And, you know, see if it can be spaced out, you know. Um, again, communication is the first thing. So, uh, but the verse I wanted to touch on just real quick, because I know this video is super long, and I apologize, um, is um, Proverbs 3.9. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. And basically what that's stating is, you give God 10% of 100% of what you got, of what you of what you earn, basically. Say it again. You give God 10% of 100% of what you earn. So that's not to say you get paid and then you start paying bills off and then you give God 10% of what's left. God wants to be first, straight up. That's how it is. And in doing so, when you trust God with the first fruits of your crops or with what you earn, with what you have, you'll start to see things change. You'll start to see more opportunities at work come up. You'll start to see um, different ways to make money pop up. You'll start to see hours open up. You know, all these different opportunities and things in order to increase your financial stability. But it starts with being obedient to the Word of God, as it says in Proverbs 3 9, uh, with the first fruits. So I just want to pray over everybody and their offering. God, just thank you. Thank you for this opportunity once again to, to come together and, and be uh, scattered but together, Lord. We just thank you for everyone here uh, that is watching. Um, I just I pray for peace over everyone's household, just everything going on. Just pray that you will help us to not be silent and to speak up when, when uh, uh, unjust things are happening, God. And I just pray for... Um, everyone, um, as we continue to ride out this pandemic, and I just pray for uh, strength and prosperity for everybody um, that is dealing with financial troubles, and I just pray that um, you would just open it up for them to be uh, 
um, communicated with their friends and just to seek help and to, to ask questions and to, to take that first step into financial freedom. Lord, we just thank you for all that you've given us. We ask that we just have a blessed day and a, a blessed week. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Hope you have a great Sunday. Good afternoon, Venture. My name is Jessica. I am the co-lead here for the First Impressions team, and I got a few announcements for y'all. Okay, so the first one is, is that we sent out a survey via email not too long ago asking you your feedback regarding coming back to church. So if you have not did that survey and you check your emails, please make sure you get a chance to do that. However, if you did miss that email, don't worry, we got you covered. There's a link to the survey in the comment section, so make your way over there, click on that link, Take those two seconds to fill out that survey so we can hear your feedback on what it would look like for us to return. Um, so lastly, just want to let you know we miss you. We can't wait to be together again. Please go through the week being kind, shed love, shed light, and we will see you guys soon. All right, have a good day.